Uh, let's talk about the headlines that we're looking at here heading into a busy week for week number five. Lots of news going on and some of it is clearly negative when you see what's happening here. Javante Williams out for the season was placed on IR right before the start of our show. He's going to miss the rest of the season with a torn ACL and torn PCL. So long-term recovery there. Hold him in Dynasty Leagues. Hold him in Long-Term Keeper League. Clearly you're dropping him though in redraft leagues. Cordero Patterson's going to be on IR for at least the next four games. So we'll see what happens after that, but dealing with a knee injury. So we'll talk about some of the replacements there. Jonathan Taylor, they are hoping he's going to play dealing with a knee injury. So hopefully he has a chance to be out there on Thursday. We'll keep you up to date on that. Kenny Pickett was named the starting quarterback for the Steelers. Tua Tungvaluwa is going to be out, so we got Teddy Bridgewater starting because Tua is in the concussion protocol. And Dak Prescott, they're hoping that he could return. Jerry Jones giving some little bit more uh, optimism for the long-term prognosis for Dak, but not expecting him to play in Week 5 against the Rams, still dealing with that shoulder injury. So let's talk about a few of these topics. We'll start with the one in Denver where Javante Williams clearly is uh, going to be missed and we'll see who's going to step up in his replacement. Melvin Gordon was the guy that we thought going into the season, but he's now fumbled four times, losing two of them on the year. And the coaching staff in Denver clearly frustrated with him. They made a, a move that I think caught a lot of people by surprise. So Latavius Murray was the leading rusher for the Saints on Sunday, was placed back on the practice squad, which meant he was eligible to be poached by another team. And that's what the Broncos did. They took Latavius Murray off of the Saints practice squad. He is now a member of the Denver backfield. Mike Boone is somebody that's on the roster. We'll see what his role is. So. Dave, make sense of the Broncos running back situation moving forward. It's not going to be pretty, and I bet it's going to be inconsistent from week to week. They proved through the first four weeks of the season that they like to use multiple running backs. That's not going to change, and it might be three running backs moving forward because Melvin Gordon's had this case of fumbleitis this year. He's still going to be the main guy, but he might only be around 50, 55% of the snaps. I think you're looking at Boone and Latavius Murray competing for the rest of those snaps, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's Murray ahead of Boone getting a lot of that work once Murray's up to speed on the playbook. So Gordon's rostered in the majority of leagues. We're going to show the waiver wire list in, in, in the, later in the show. You have a choice to pick up Murray or Boone. Which way are you going? I'm going to pick up M Murray because I do think there's a chance if Gordon falters again or Gordon gets hurt, then Latavius Murray might get 15 carries a game for as long as he can hold up to that. I really, like Mike Boone might take over the passing game work. I really can't see a situation where Mike Boone's going to be the guy that's carrying the ball 12 to 15 times, no matter who gets hurt. Yep, and, and we'll just see. So we really don't know. We don't even know for Thursday because Murray's got to travel from New Orleans to Denver. He's got to get himself acclimated to the team. He may not be active for Thursday night's game, so it could be Gordon and Boone. Uh, but for your waiver priority, uh, we're going to say Murray over Boone, but don't spend a lot of your fab budget on either one of those guys. The Falcons' backfield is now open for the, at least the next four weeks, but there's a lot at play here because Tyler Algier, Caleb Huntley, they were the guys stepping in for Patterson in the win against the Browns in week number four. However, Damian Williams on IR is expected to be eligible to return next week. You go back to week one, and Williams was supposed to be in tandem with Cordero Patterson. So, Heath, I'll come to you first on the Falcons situation. Algier is probably going to be the most popular ad, no matter what position, because of his opportunity and the game that he just had. And you remember in the preseason, we thought maybe Algier would be the best running back for the Falcons. But make sense of these three guys without Patterson there for the next four weeks. I'm, I'm really scared about this one because like they, there was talk, especially the week leading up to week one, that Damian Williams was going to lead the backfield and did have two of the first three carries. And so I am very concerned that Damian <coughs> Williams comes back and all of a sudden he's getting 50% of the carries. I would still prioritize it Algier, then Damian Williams, then Caleb Huntley. I agree 100%. You know, and the nice thing about Algier is that he's a physical running back. He's got some quick bursts, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield. And we saw it in the second half after Cordero Patterson left, or really in the second half when Patterson wasn't on the field. He played the majority of third and fourth down snaps for Atlanta. So they might like him best as their passing downs back. And maybe he, they, he's their lead back for however long that Damian Williams is up. But when Williams comes back, you've got to figure that he steps right in. It's a hornet's nest. I really don't feel good spending a lot of fab on any of these guys. They don't really throw to their running backs very much, so I don't know playing on passing downs really matters for them. I mean, they had the one situation where Mario threw an interception, Arthur Smith called 14 straight run plays. They want to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And it's not Mariota anymore. He hasn't run since week one. So it's a lot on the running back. So it's a good situation, but a very brutal schedule starting this week against Tampa Bay. So again, don't go crazy with your fab, but Algier should be probably the most added player in CBSSports.com. He's probably any league that you play on. Let's talk about the Dolphins situation. We know it's been a little bit of a messy scenario with the quarterback because of Tua Tungvaloa, back injury, concussion. Now he's in the concussion protocol. Not going to play in week five. Mike McDaniel saying it's going to be Teddy Bridgewater. 
So, Dave, we're not really looking at Bridgewater, maybe deep two quarterback super flex leagues. Mm. But what does this mean for Jalen Waddle? What does this mean for Tyreek Hill? If you've got Matthew Stafford and you've got to go to the waiver wire, Bridgewater might be a consideration there. It depends on who else is on the waiver wire. But you're still going to start Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. These are must start receivers. There's no question on Tyreek Hill after what he did with Bridgewater last week. And I think Bridgewater will realize that Jalen Waddle's on the team and that he will target him. And it's the Jets. This is not a tough matchup by any stretch of the imagination for the Miami Dolphins. The thing that's really going to be interesting to me is the one thing Teddy Bridgewater has struggled with throughout his career at every single location is throwing the ball into the end zone, getting passing touchdowns. Like In terms of yards per attempt, in terms of passer rating, he's been a, an average to above average, average quarterback. He's always been a 4% touchdown rate guy. That's not something that's going to sustain both Tyreek Hill and Waddle as both must-start options. I'm starting him this week, but watching closely. Yeah, Waddle is, is, is the one you got to be worried about right. just because of the small sample size that we have. The second half against the Bengals, and it was clearly a lot of Tyreek kill but I think by design it's easier to get him the ball somewhat than it is Jalen Waddle so uh, Waddle to me is more of a number two receiver Tyreek Hill still a, a slam dunk must start number one uh, type of guy the Steelers have a new quarterback with uh, Kenny Payne taking over for uh, Mitchell Drabisky. That's the report as of now that we're working on, but we expect that to be official from Mike Tomlin uh, in, in maybe in about 20 minutes or so. So uh, assuming that this is the, the scenario that Pickett is going to start, Heath, what does this mean for Deontay Johnson? What does it mean for George Pickens, Chase Claypool, Pat Fryermuth, the reception, the receiving options there in Pittsburgh? Very encouraged that Pat Fryermuth saw continued involvement. So I think he's still a must-start tight end. The wide receivers are a little bit iffy because it was pretty much all George Pickens. It was a lot more stuff downfield. It's more upside, but it's also more risk. We don't know if Pickett's going to be able to keep from turning the ball over. He turned over three times in a half of football last week. I, I gave Pickens a boost. I want to make sure he's rostered, but I don't want to start him. I'm still starting Deontay Johnson this week as a low-end number two wide receiver. But if he has another low target game, I'm going to be very concerned. Pickett's had over 70 yards on four catches from Kenny Pickett in the second half last week. And those three interceptions that he referenced, I don't know if any of those are necessarily on Pickett. One was a Hail one, Mary. One, one was his fault. Which one was his fault? The first one. The second one was, was the, off the receiver's hands. The third one was the Hail Mary. Which one was... All right, so there were, it looked like there were two that were off of receivers' hands. One to Friar Muth and the, one to the, Claypool. The first the one, the, one, the, the, the first one looked like a bad throw. The second yellow, one was a yellow ball. The second one was, was a, a tip ball, and then the third one was the Hail Mary. Okay, well, the Hail Mary, I'm not, I'm not counting any of this against them. And I know that there are concerns about right. this offense, and the schedule moving forward is really, really tough. I am encouraged by it. I'm very happy for Friar Muth. I think George Pickens is going to end up mattering quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. We'll talk about him when we get to the waiver wire uh, receivers and even the waiver wire quarterbacks because Pickett, the nice thing that you know, he showed you in college, he can run. Did have 15 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns against the Jets. So we'll see what that matters for him as well. Uh, let's talk about uh, the situation in Dallas because Jerry Jones, usually Mr. Optimism when it comes to everybody in Dallas, he says, hold on, we're going to slow the roll here a little bit with Dax coming back because he's still trying to figure out if he can grip the ball. Just had the stitches removed, so uh, he's not well enough to play according to Jerry Jones yet in terms of D Dak Prescott facing the Rams in week number five. And we got the report prior to Sunday that we could be looking at week six is more of the target date for Dak Prescott. So, uh, Dave, you've referenced Matthew Stafford now and his struggles a few times. We know that there's been a, a Trey Lance injury that fantasy managers have been struggling to replace. Yeah. Is now the time to go make a trade for Dak Prescott if you can get him cheap before he comes back and maybe starts to play like Dak Prescott. Terrific by low suggestion, 100% the case. But there are going to be people that have Dak on their bench. They've also been struggling to find a quarterback. What is the likelihood that they found somebody that they feel Could more comfortable starting Could have Jared Goff who's playing with. great. Could have Geno Smith who's playing Would great. Would you Could feel comfortable having no, those I'm guys saying, and Dak know. and then sticking with but, those but two you, and not you, Dak? You might have drafted... Uh, Dak and Trevor Lawrence. You might have drafted Dak and Kirk Cousins. You know, you yeah. could be in a situation where you're fine with the quarterback situation and you're getting something pretty good in return for Dak. If that's the case, then of course I'm happy to trade Dak away. And if I'm desperate for a quarterback, Dak is the one that I'm targeting right now because he's going to be pretty cheap. And look, uh, it's good that Michael Gallup's back. Holy Dalton Schultz starts to play a little bit better. Uh, had no production last week, but we know there's still better days ahead for him. So this Cowboys offense still has a lot of potential for it. And Dak Prescott back there would be great. Heath, I want to ask you about a couple wide receivers that are dealing with injuries and just give me your take on a, should we be worried? And B, who is the guy that would benefit? So we'll go through this quickly, rapid fire style. So Rashad Bateman's got a midfoot sprain, left the game in a walking boot. Who would benefit if he's not there? Devin DuVernay would, but not to the point to where I'd want to start him. It would just be all Mark Andrews and J.K. Dobbins. Could be all Mark Andrews and J.K. Dobbins, but I do think that DuVernay could score some touchdowns. He does have three on the season so far. John Dotson expected to be out for one to two weeks dealing with a hamstring injury. Who benefits it? Hopefully Terry McLaurin starts getting used like a starting wide receiver. His 16% target share is not startable right now. 
Traylon Burks is going to miss some time, uh, according to reports, with what is considered turf toe. Who benefits for Tennessee? Robert Woods is the clear number one wide receiver and number three in Tennessee. Yep, and he's gotten two strong performances the last two weeks, averaging 12 and a half PPR points over that span. So hopefully that's something to build on as the new number one receiver for Tennessee. All right, we're going to